So now we're ready to look at tunneling through a, a structure that has a, a, a number of barriers and we want to uh, see how band structure is being formed. Um, again, as a reference, there is a tool called Piecewise Constant Potential Barrier Tool, PCPBT, on NanoHub, and we'll use that extensively also in this section. All right. So, as we're going back to the case of a double barrier structure, we can abstract uh, our observation a little bit. So, we had effectively one well and had one transmission peak uh, for one uh, resonance in the system. Now, if we go in the tool and model this and increase the barrier numbers uh, from two to three, uh, where we choose a, a barrier height as before uh, at 110 millielectron volt, we choose a, a well of six nanometers and a barrier of two nanometers. And if we add one uh, barrier to the structure, what we find is that uh, there is two resonances uh, that show perfect transmission of one under the barrier. So that resembles that of a bonding and anti-bonding state if you've done some chemistry um, calculations before. Now let's do the next thing. We add another barrier. Now we have three wells and we receive three transmission peaks here that correspond to these energies here. You get the picture. Now I'm adding a fourth well and I see four transmission peaks. And what I'm seeing is that um, I'm starting to form a transmission that starts to resemble a little bit of a square. It starts, if you're an electrical engineer that looked at band pass filters, that might start to look familiar to you. Now I'm adding five uh, one more trend, uh, barrier uh, for five wells, I get five peaks. And I also notice that these transmissions are not perfectly symmetric to the um, band that I'm forming here at the lower edge and the upper edge. So there is some asymmetry. Now six wells and six transmission peaks, seven and seven, eight and eight, nine and nine. Now I'm going up to 19. So you really see a very sharp definition of this band emerging now in which you can have a transmission that looks over a broad energy range uh, close to one. So one is here, but it's significantly larger than uh, point one, And you can argue it's significantly larger than 2, 3, 4. So larger than 0.4 over a significant energy range. Now I'm going to 39 uh, wells, 39 peaks, and basically I'm, I'm reaching strong transmission here over a wide energy range. Um, and I've deformed, I've really formed a bandpass filter if you're into electronics, or you're forming a band in which electrons can move through a structure almost perfectly. Um, 49. And now here's an animation and a GIF file that's also uh, posted with a tool. And you can clearly see nicely, I think, how this um, transmission evolves from a pretty narrow uh, uh, single transmission, um, sorry, pretty broad transmission of a single state to something that is really well defined. And if you follow this line here, you can really see nicely how this band is getting sharper and sharper. That is above the, um, at the top energy, and that is also true here at the, at the lower energy. So we're defining uh, these bands really well. Now, if I take the next step and actually track the position of this peak here as a discrete number. So I'm tracking just the, the energy of this. 
as an, and plot them as an occurrence. So here, now I have uh, two peaks, three, four, five, six, seven. I start to see that these start to line up into a form. So as I'm going up in a uh, number of wells, I have 19 wells, 19 transmission peaks, and I have 19 states in the system. And if I'm ending up here with the 39 states, I really start to see that there's a curve emerging here in which uh, electrons can transmit perfectly through the uh, structure and below which there is no transmission. So above which there is, uh, uh, inside this energy range there is virtually perfect transmission and outside of that range there is no transmission. So that's really the effect of band structure emerging in a in a numerical experiment uh, like that. All right, so it's somewhat of a cosine-shaped form. It's not perfectly symmetric. Um, and uh, we'll look at some additional cases now. So here, um, I'm, I'm showing the animation of the result uh, before. Again, you see the emergence of these bands here. So you really see how this band structure is emerging. And here is the final result just as a, as a single picture. So we have n wells, n states, and we formed one band. Now the question is, can we form multiple bands in a structure that is similar? So I, in the case on, below, in, I went from uh, 110 molecular volt barrier height to 400 molecular volt barrier height. So I just made the same barriers taller. And what you see is um, two uh, states are in this um, system now and for, per well. So we have n wells and uh, two n states and we have two bands emerging. And the uh, second band uh, in the structure looks actually reasonably similar to the first band in the upper structure. So it's much wider and, and uh, uh, somewhat broader. The uh, lower band here in this structure is much narrower in, uh, in its energy. So roughly here and here, here and here. And what you see is that there is a virtually forbidden area here, forbidden here, forbidden here. And as you add barriers in the structure, as you, if you will, add atoms in the structure, you have band structure emerging in the system. So to me, this is a very uh, intuitive way to, exp uh, to show how, it, uh, as you add atoms to a system of a linear chain, uh, how band structure is starting to emerge across these coupled atoms. And that is, to me, an intuitive way of explaining how band structure emerges in a large solid. Sometimes I've gotten questions from students in a class, how many atoms do you need to uh, establish band structure? And this experiment here shows that there's some ambiguity in it and it's a, there's a question of exactness. Band structure as such is not extremely exact. It depends on the assumptions that you put in. In this numerical experiment, how many uh, barriers you put in and in uh, the subsequent model where we look at periodic potentials, it somewhat depends on uh, the large number of basis sets that you place into the system. So there's some approximation to band structure by itself. All right, so here's the summative slide that shows uh, how you have n wells with two n states and you get two bands. And of course, you can pack in more states into a barrier structure, double barrier structure, by making the well wider. And 
I'm doing that here. So uh, same same barrier height here, but now uh, I increased the the well width, and I'm packing in three bands now. But the overall effect looks rather similar. Um, that if you have a band that is close to the top of the barrier height here, you get a reasonably broad band. Again, you're close to the top, you get a broad band. Close to the top, you get a broad band. And as you go deeper in energy into the well, the bands get narrower. So down here, the bandwidth gets pretty narrow. Okay. So these bands are shaped in a way as a function of uh, the barrier heights, the well widths, and the details of the confinement that the electrons would see if they were truly bound to the system. But we're considering an open system where we inject from the left and transmit to the right. And we see in these structures that we have, in a certain energy range, perfect transmission, like this. And we have forbidden regions where electrons are really just not allowed. Okay, here's the animation of that structure. All right, so here's the summative slide. Each quasi-bound state give, uh, gives rise to a resonance in a well. Um, the degeneracy between the states is lifted through interaction between these states. Uh, there's a cosine-like dispersion of bands that is forming. And uh, each, uh, each state per well forms this band. And the lower bands have a smaller slope, and that will ultimately lead to a heavier mass. So with that, that concludes the, the segment of the numerical experiment with n barriers. And we're going to look at some of the solution strategies um, uh, that we pursue in structures like these. And um, I'll get to that in the next segment. So thank you very much.